Hey, what's good, everybody? This your boy, Paul Pickett. We back on the Triple P, Paul Pickett Podcast. Um, You know how I do. This is the sports edition. You know, um, we're going to get into some NBA talk and then some NFL talk. Uh, first, I want to talk about, though, um, my home state team, Charlotte Hornets, man. Like, I don't know that we've had any excitement like this in Charlotte for the Hornets since like Larry Johnson and Alonzo morning days. Like I like what I'm seeing from LaMelo. Like what I'm seeing. When I first seen LaMelo, he was young, immature kid. Don't in the limelight, you know, cause his brother was famous at the time. Lonzo ball. LaMelo was mature. A lot. LaMelo has matured a lot. I like what I see from this kid for his maturity. He's very tall. He's six foot eight. He looked like he's been hitting the weights. He's definitely not, you know, shying away from anything. The kid can rebound good. He's six foot eight. He can rebound. He, he can pass. His passing is is extraordinary. Um, He's starting to get a shooting rhythm. He hasn't been super aggressive, like, you know, trying to score the basket. But, you know, you got a lot of money tied up in the backcourt anyways with um, Graham and uh, Scary Terry. Terry Rozier, you know. And Terry Rozier has been balling. Graham's been balling. Um... They got LaMelo coming off the bench. But that's the thing. The number one pick right now is coming off the bench. So, like, am I supposed to be up, you know, put down the number third pick from coming off the bench when the number one pick is coming off the bench? And it's definitely, like I said, a lot of money tied up in that backcourt. Terry Rozier just got that contract, like, last year, you know. Then Graham is balling out like he did last year, 19-20 a game, you know. And, and – LaMelo could play a lot of different positions in this day and age. If he gets a little bit more, you know, cut, more built, I mean, six foot eight, he could play power forward, you know, power forward, small forward. He probably could play power forward right now in a small ball league that it is, you know. So, yeah, man, I'm excited, you know. Um, Another thing I want to get into, I talked about when we talked about the – John Wall and the Russell Westbrook trade. Um, Houston won the trade. They won the trade because the Wizards still ain't won a game. Um, Westbrook, yeah, he plays hard. He's explosive, but he's not a great shooter. Um, He's not efficient, and it doesn't look like the Wizards are going to make the playoffs. But the Houston Rockets, on the other hand, John Wall and James Harden look pretty good together. Hey, I think they scored like 55 points. They each had like almost eight assists, I think, you know. I mean, if you get 20 and 8, 30 and 8 out of both of them, you know, then you got Christian Wood and Eric Gordon and P.J. Tucker and Boogie Cousins and Daniel House Jr., I think his name is. I mean, yeah, man, they, I think they won the trade in the long run, you know. And even though Harden probably still wants out, he he is balling when he comes on the court. And that's one thing I got to at least say that he does – when he does come to work, he does his job. So I can't knock that, you know. Um, the Warriors. I thought the Warriors was going to be a little bit better. You know, actually, I thought the Warriors going to be a lot better, even without Clay. But I think we're overestimating the Warriors, how good they are. So, yeah. I mean, Kelly Oubre just hit his first three. He's missed a lot of threes. He ain't really put up a lot of points. Wiggins put up one big game. You know, 
Curry is definitely struggling to try to carry a team that the guys who really can't score too much on their own. Um, the Hawks, Atlanta Hawks. I like what I see from the Atlanta Hawks. They got a little bit of young and old mixed on this team. That Gallinari and that Bogdan Bogdanovich pickup are uh, this is gonna work. Cam Reddish has stepped up his game. You got DeAndre Hunter. Trey Young can't be guarded, is playing lights out, unstoppable. Um, I'm like what I see. You got Clay Capella, Rondo. Um, yeah, man, I'm like what the Hawks have to offer. The Hawks are definitely going to make the playoffs this year. Um, you got the Nets. Nets look good. Nets are looking good. Um, they lost Spencer Dinwiddie, but they still look good. They got Karis LeVert. You know, you got Joe Harris as your fourth option. You still got, you know, DeAndre Jordan and, you know, Jared Allen. I like what I'm seeing from the Nets. Um, Clippers look like they got something to prove, even though they got blown out when they did by the Mavericks. You know, Mavericks definitely need Porzingis back. You know, because if not, it's they're going to be like a 500 team. You know, they'll ball out this game and lose the next. Ball out this game and lose the next. Um, what else? Uh, Trailblazers look good. If everybody stays healthy, I'm interested to see what they could do. Michael Porter Jr. looks like he's making that step up. Um. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks, man. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm not convinced, man. Milwaukee ain't coming out the East this year. And Philly looks good. Philly looks good. Philly looks good. Doc Rivers got Philly looking good. Um, Ben Simmons is looking like the best um, on-ball defender in the NBA, the best one-on-one defender in the NBA. Um, He was locking down on Pascal Siakam. You know, like, that's the thing. This idea that Ben Simmons has to have this amazing jump shot or a jump shot. Like, he he could pass the ball, he could rebound, he could play defense, and he could score inside. And that's four things he does very well that he brings to the table. Most most dudes only do one thing very well. They might just rebound well, might just play defense well, or might just score well, and that's it. You know, this typically a guy does four things well. Um, yeah, I don't think there's really much more to get into with NBA, man. Um, some of these teams that, uh, Orlando looks good, but they got beat the other night, but they're playing good. Um, I mean, like, yeah, Sixers at the top right now, man, four and one, uh, Pacers look good. Sabonis looks like he's having a breakout, even a breakout year from last year. But he could watch out for him to get most approved of the year. Uh, Cleveland, um, I don't think they're going to they're, – they're looking good right now, but they just – they went 3-0 and and they lost two straight. I don't think they stay in the in the playoff. Uh-huh. I think they'll fall down because you still got the, uh, the Bucs. Uh, Toronto, I'm thinking they'll get it together eventually, even though it's not looking good. They're 1-3. Plus – you know they might have they've had a somewhat tough schedule. Uh, you got the Clippers in the West, the Suns, yes, yeah, Suns. Let's talk about them. Um, Chris Paul has already changed the face of the Suns. <laughs> He's already changed their fortunes. Like if they don't make the playoffs, I'd be so shocked. I'd be so shocked. And you got my Carolina boy um, Cameron Johnson coming off the bench, and he's balling out. You know. Pelicans look good. They had three and two. And J.J. Redick ain't even got it going yet. Um, T-Wolves, they're two and two right now. They got them in the – they'd be in the playoffs right now. But I don't – you know, between Houston, Mavericks, and Denver not starting off too well, I don't see them staying. One of those three teams are definitely be in. Uh, you got Portland Jazz, Lakers. Kings are looking good, but I don't know that Kings can hold it up. Like I said, you still got Houston, Mavs, and Denver. 
who were all three in the playoffs last year, and they're starting out slow. They are like one and two, one and three, you know. But uh, yeah, man, you know Memphis, they're at the bottom of the pack again because once again it's starting to that youth is starting to really show this year. You know, it was like they left out last year, falling out like they did. All right, um, let me get to the NFL. And also, don't forget if you're in the, um, you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button in the right hand corner. Don't forget we're also on um, Apple, you know, Amazon, Deezer, um, TuneIn, and several other platforms where you can subscribe to the podcast. Plus, we'll be on Instagram, TV, and Facebook. Um, the Browns and um, the Ravens are definitely under some pressure. Definitely under some pressure. Um, they both got to win their games. Um, Seahawks are already in. Uh, we got Rams and Cardinals. They're, they're fighting for that wild card. Rams are 9 and 6. Cardinals are. Eight and seven, above five hundred, and this is um Kyle, Kyle Murray's second year. I think he gets him to the playoffs. He definitely stepped up his game. Uh, you got the Saints, eleven and four, already in. Buccaneers, ten and five, they're in. Um, I still think like Tampa is my like sleeper team. You know, I know like. Seahawks and maybe the Saints and the Packers probably look better than, but I'm still like they're under the radar. They're ten and five. It's Brady's first year there. I, I still like think they're gonna be scary as hell playoff time. Um, but if I had my pick to come out um the NFC, it'd be the the Packers. And also like they need to make some new rule like for le- you know divisions like the NFC least also known as the NFC East, like, you can't have no team going to the playoffs with a 7-9 and nine record. They don't even deserve to be in the playoffs. No, no team from that division should even be, you know, counted in the playoffs. I think, like, they need to make some rule. If you're below 500 and you win a division, like, your spot's forfeited to the next best team for a wild card slot. Um, we got AFC, Tennessee and the Colts. They're both 10 and 5. Um, I think they'll both be in, though. I don't know, man. There's a lot of 10 and 5s. It's going to be tough. So whoever wins that division, you definitely, you definitely need to win that division. You can't just rely on a wild card. Bills are in. Pittsburgh's in. You got Baltimore and Cleveland both for 10 and 5. I mean, plus you got Dolphins at 10 and 5. It's going to be tough for anybody to get in that wild card spot. And Kansas City is definitely in. So it's going to be between Baltimore, Cleveland, Dolphins, Colts, and Tennessee for that wild card slot. And um, yeah, I'm definitely, I got Browns um, beating Pittsburgh. It's gonna be tough, man. One of these teams that's gonna come out with these uh eleven and five records ain't gonna um they ain't gonna make it, man. Maybe two. I mean, it's there's a lot of there's a lot of ten and five teams going to eleven and five, possibly this week. You know, um, I don't mean, ain't much to really say, man. This is the last week, um. Yeah, I don't know what there ain't much to really to to get into. Um, nothing, no real big big stories. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into my picks though, and um, I'm gonna call it a podcast. We got Atlanta and Tampa, definitely going Tampa. Dallas and the Giants, going Dallas. Jets and New England, I'm going New England. Minnesota and Detroit, I'm gonna go Minnesota. Pittsburgh, Cleveland, I got Cleveland. Baltimore, Cincinnati, I got Baltimore. Miami, Buffalo. Um, I don't know if 
Buffalo is playing Josh Allen. If they don't, I'm going to go Miami. If they do, I'm going Buffalo. Seattle, San Fran. San Fran's fell off from Super Bowl last year. Seattle. Arizona, Chargers. Oh, man, Justin Herbert is balling out this year. He could have the Chargers at 10 and 6. I'm going to the Chargers. I mean, Justin Herbert is definitely the quarterback of the future there. Jacksonville, Indy, Indy over Jacksonville. Tennessee and Houston, Tennessee over Houston. Vegas, Las Vegas Raiders and the Denver Broncos. I'm going to go to Raiders. And my bad, it was, I said the Chargers versus the, the Cardinals. It's the Rams versus the Cardinals and the Chargers versus the Chiefs and Justin Herbert though is still quarterback of the future. Chiefs are not playing Mahomes. I'm going to say that the Chargers win that. Green Bay and the Bears. I got Green Bay. And New Orleans and Carolina. I got New Orleans. And Washington and Philly. I got Washington. Um, MVP for the year, I'm going to – I'm. I, it's got to be Aaron Rodgers has to get MVP this year. If not, it's it's a fluke. Um, coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski, Stefanski, giving him coach of the year. I'm going with Kevin Stefanski of coach of the year. Um, rookie of the year, I'm going Justin Herbert. And... That's it, man. You know, I, I mean, ain't no really big news. You know, we got this last week coming up. If you're on you, you know, the YouTube, hit the subscribe button in the right hand corner. Also, check out, check us out on Apple, Deezer, Amazon. Tune in several other platforms as well. Instagram, TV, Facebook, um, you know, Twitter. Follow us at Paul P Podcast. Facebook, Paul Pickett Podcast. Google us, Paul Pickett Podcast. Once again, I'm your host, Paul Pickett. Um, check out some of my websites, promopalace.biz, indiecastle.net, planetplaylist.com, newlitter.com for that new litter apparel. And we got the uh, website coming for the podcast as well. And um, stay tuned in for new videos every week. Don't forget to check out the music marketing vlogs as well on the Paul Pickett Podcast. And I'm out. Peace.